the streaming world of what he believes to be of quality. But there is, unseen by most, an episodic horror-based TV show. A show that still holds up. A show called Tales from the Dark Side. Yeah, Smith told us to use black and white. He knew. And Smith made it all seem important, you know, as if there were millions of people out there waiting for us. Hey, what's up? And welcome back to Talks from the Dark Side, the podcast where we talk about Tales from the Dark Side, the 80s horror anthology television show created by George Romero and Richard Rubenstein. I'm Joe LaScola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. And I'm Chris Barr. Today we're talking about Distant Signals, directed by Bill Travis and written by Theodore Gershney, with an original air date of November 17th, 1985. So we're entering the Matrix, fellas. We're, we're calling in, we're talking to Mr. Smith, we're trying <laughs> to look for fucking uh, Neo and the gang. Mr. Rubenstein! Uh, <laughs> Is this the Matrix or Galaxy Quest? It's definitely more Galaxy Quest, but just the fact that it's a guy with sunglasses named Mr. Smith, I had yeah. to make the, the Matrix reference. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Beyond that, no correlation whatsoever. <laughs> so yeah, before we before we jump into this, uh, can we get that Fangoria synopsis, please? Yeah, let's do it. So the Fangoria synopsis from their official Tales from the Dark Side episode guide goes, the writer, director, and star of a failed television series are approached by an enigmatic investor who wants to revive the show. Although the canceled program never attracted much of an Earthbound audience, the financier reveals that he is an alien whose race has been eagerly awaiting the conclusion of the obscure cathode saga. Fucking spoiler alert. There it is. I, I, usually I would agree, but I feel like if you don't figure this out in the first like minute or two, you haven't been watching this show. Well, <laughs> sure. But I mean, you keep saying, oh, it's not from this country. It's a country far, far away. France, obviously. Well, yeah. Well, I'm just saying, well, the, the, I mean- I think, they do it. Like, I think they do it in a, in a good way. No, it's do. fun. And it's like, yeah, it's like, you know what, you know what he's, t you know, what he's up to and yeah. like kind of, you know, the way he just alludes to like, I'm from far away. Yeah. Far, far, far yeah. south. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ex exactly. Mm -hmm. Again, France, like yes. yeah. yeah. France. We come from France. And oh. it's fun. And it's like, I feel like even that, that little like episode guide spoiler. Are you sure? It's like, all right, cool. Because you really don't, I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's surmised but like <laughs> yeah. they don't even drop that until like the end of the episode like the Last very minute. end the, yeah. and it's only like maybe he, he doesn't yeah. reveal you know, it to be know, honest it yeah. just kind of happens and you're like huh okay <laughs> so yeah uh like chris said this is about uh, a writer and a director who uh a writer director excuse me dave margulies gil hearn Lenny, <laughs> the mayor from Ghostbusters. The mayor from Ghostbusters. Yep. Uh, hence why I just wore this fucking Ghostbusters yeah. t-shirt. I had to <laughs> oh, shout out the tapes from the crypt. Uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Thank you. So, uh, so he used to make the show called Max Paradise, <laughs> and it was yeah. like a, it was like a detective television show. I think in like the sixties. Yeah, was I, think all... I think at one point they say like sixty-seven. Yeah, it was it was late sixties, yeah. right before they went to color because it was it's in black and white. Mm -hmm. But the whole goof, which is like like in that Fangoria synopsis, is that it wasn't good. It lasted like. Like six episodes and got the axe. Got canceled, yeah. It got canceled, yeah. Uh, and I think at one point uh, they even say that like when it was canceled, they only got like twelve letters. Like, hey, why was it canceled? <laughs> yeah, nobody cared. Right. No. Yeah. And that's but sorry. Before we jump yeah. into it, yeah, it's yeah. like that's kind of what makes this so like fun. It's oh yeah, yeah. Like the premise of this just random show that nobody cared about. All of a sudden, like some guys about to spend what is it three million dollars? Uh, this in, this this investor shows up. <laughs> <laughs> with like fucking Investor. gold gold bars in a suitcase. Yeah. So uh, yeah, putting the cart before the horse. But uh, the so, so did the fucking synopsis. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, this investor comes in and yeah. he basically hits up the agent of the director uh, of Lenny, Lenny, and he's like, "I need to talk to him." Oh, excuse me, his name is Mr. Smith, like we alluded to in the beginning. Right. Wow. <laughs> and he's played by uh, Lenny Van Dolan, who was in uh, Twin Peaks and Firewalk with me. And he's also, I believe, one of the robbers in Home Alone 3, I think. Uh, okay. that, 
I, he's in the movie. A, yeah, good, he <laughs> is. You're right. I'm like picturing it now. He totally is. I don't know if he's one of the robbers he or, or, or he's just in the movie. He 100% yeah. is one of the robbers. Uh, but he's great in this and he's he's a very soft-spoken fellow and he just wants to see Max Paradise finish out its season. Yeah, he's like, oh, are you a fan of the show? He's like, oh. Fan. <laughs> Oh my god! I am I am an elitist of Max <laughs> Paradise. <laughs> He's the fucking like uh, Encyclopedia Britannica of knowledge on the six episodes, are just crammed yeah. in this man's head. I must speak to Mister Hearn. Yeah, and he's like, "No, oh, I, only I talk to Mister Hearn, baby." And he's like, "Well, maybe this will persuade you." And he opens up this case, and there's just a fucking bunch of solid gold bars in it. And he's like, "Oh, yeah. holy shit, uh, Martha, hold all my yeah, calls." Now he's listening. Uh, yeah, and that's that's when he calls Lenny. Man, money talks and bullshit walks, yeah. dude. He's like, sir. He's like, I'm a fan of the hit detective show, Max <laughs> Paradise. Hardly a hit. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, well, I, I, we need the original actor. We need the, uh, we can, nobody else can play it. They're talking to the fucking director and the writer. And they're like, huh? Well, Van Conway, played by uh, Darren McGavin, the old man the himself. old man from Christmas Story. Uh, he's also uh, Kolchak, the Night Stalker, dude. <laughs> Which is very is similar, really? like to the to like what he's kind of playing. And I wonder if that was sort of like that's a little like nod to it. Yeah, okay. that's right. That's yeah. how I took it has it to be. Yeah, I didn't yeah. realize that. that yeah. Is, yeah, you're yeah. probably right. Um, so yeah, the whole premise here is like Mr. Smith represents. He even says he's it represents a group of foreign right, investors. Foreign. You might as well just yeah, because he he does it in the episode. Yeah, kind yeah. of like hints to uh, you know looks foreign. up. Yeah. yeah foreign <laughs> investors it's like all right I get it but it's fine it's like it's not it's not done in a way that's like no. stupid it's not too hand-fisted either yeah, it's like, like at all. you you figure where it's going and yeah. it's like all right cool yeah. it's like let's do it it is also like a, a, you know one of those like the men in black kind of thing that's in a, a lot of sci-fi stuff but like not a, a, a an evil men in black like you know you see yeah. sometimes where the aliens are actually just in suits it's just like no it is that, but it's more like, you know, the day the earth stood still kind of thing where it's like, no, I'm, I'm just talking here. I have an objective. We're not actually trying to do anything bad, but, you yeah. know, come on. He's friendly, having a, like a civil conversation yeah, with yeah. this guy. He's there on a mission. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with conquering the world exactly. or no. anything. <laughs> and it's almost a, like a more noble, like, mission. Yeah. Because it's like, think In about how many shows got canceled. I know. That you wish you could just bring back. Yeah. And that's kind of what he wants. It's like Max Paradise. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So Max Paradise gets cut off like mid season. There's a big cliffhanger that he's yeah. not happy about. He's like, he's like, you don't understand. Max Paradise is ending. His identity must be revealed. It's a brilliant series <laughs> that needs to be completed. He's mythic. He's mythic <laughs> and it's kind of fun. i love that so much <laughs> it's kind of funny in today's climate and i know like people tend to forget they put on their rose tinted glasses and forget that this has always been a thing but like how series come back even back in the 80s things were coming back for you know because i think it was 65 was, was the original max power show or max max paradise whatever the fuck it's called max, max paradise. paradise yeah <laughs> max uh, paradise was uh, max uh, hardcore yeah. exactly yeah the triple x version with the old man with that <laughs> leg but uh, like that, like I don't know. It's still relevant to today, where it's like, yeah, series. So people still want to see what happened to those characters, and you know, look, one that always comes to mind is Columbo. But at least that series did continue. But then you know, there's a million others that it's like, what the heck? like? Look at Netflix. How many shows get canceled in the modern era? I guess let's say, yeah, a hundred percent. I see what you're saying. So they can't do the show without Van Conway, who's Darren McGavin, right? So. He's like, he's like, Lenny's, well, I'm just going to call him fucking Lenny. <laughs> yeah, Len, it's hard uh, not to. I, I, his name's, Ghost his name? from, the, the, the mayor from Ghostbusters. His, his, his name's Gil Hearn in this episode. And uh, he's like, he's like, Van Conway, I, he's dead. I don't even know if he's even alive anymore. Yeah, he disappeared. And he's like, I found him. <laughs> and yes, he's dead. Hard cut to Darren McGavin. He's like, Van Conway's dead. And now he's like a drunk who's like working at a bartender. He's all washed up. He's oh, washed yeah, up he's, actor. Yeah, he's a, he's a wreck. He's in a bad way. So uh, Mr. Smith gives him these little vitamins, and he's like, take one of these every day. Vitamins. Vitamins. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Vita Vita Vegemite. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and take three a day or something, Yeah, you'll feel says. better in a couple days. This is where it starts where it's really great, because now we're finally interacting. Like, Mr. Smith is finally interacting with Gil Hearn, mm. uh, Lenny, and uh, he just interacted with Van Conway. And they open up this fucking old studio door. To this old abandoned like uh, stage, it's all grimy, it's all gross. There's cobwebs all yeah. over the place, and he's like, "Here it is." It's like it's magnificent. He's like, "It's just an old stage." Yeah. What are you talking about? He's yeah. like, he's, no, like, no, no. he's blown away yeah. standing at Mr. Smith. He's oh, like, yeah. he's like, "This is it's an honor." 
Yeah. To be standing in this location. <laughs> He's like, it's a studio, pal. Yeah. I don't know what, <laughs> I don't you know what you're talking about. Also, just kind of knowing this actor from Ghostbusters as like the hardcore serious judge is kind of funny to see he's wearing just a regular like, you know, snapback hat and like, you know, this huge brim. It's oh, like yeah. he looks like, like a kind of fellow kids kind of thing, it feels like, but he's a director. Obviously, well, yeah, that's the director's hat. <laughs> I was gonna just say though, that's obviously it was just a style at the time, but it's just funny seeing that actor in that kind of outfit was mind blowing to me a little bit. Yeah, a hundred percent. I love I love this conversation between the two of them because you know, he's like, he's like, he's like, Max Paradise was bullshit. Like, nobody cared, whatever. And he's like, no, you don't understand. When you were doing Max Paradise, you had passion in your writing. Yeah. You, you, it was poetry. It was poetry. <laughs> and, he's, and he's like, really, like, it's like, you have, there's a contrast here of like, yeah. you know, the, the director just putting it down. It's like, oh, it was garbage. It's like, yeah. he's remember, like, I had to bury it yeah. or else my career would have been ruined. This is where I stood when it was canceled. Yeah. It's like, we I got right 12 here. letters. <laughs> and you got Mr. Smith. It's like, this is the height. Of televisual art. <laughs> yes, that's so, what it is. Yeah. The height of televisual art. But it's just funny because you can see like how passionate he is about mm. them continuing the story. And it's a he yeah. he's offering them what uh, $23 million in 80s money? Yeah, to do six more episodes. Yeah. To finish the Max Paradise yeah. series. So he's just funding like a, a continuation of it. Yeah. Just to have a final ending and like some closure. To this random ass show, yeah, but it all has to be perfect. Yep, we're right. shooting it in black and white. We're doing it on the same sound stage. We're bringing back the same director and writer, and we're bringing back Van Conway because he's the only person who could do it. Exactly. Nobody else could fill the shoes. No, he, he, he fucking meets him like a couple days later, <laughs> and they're like looking in the mirror. Like and I love th- I, this is a great scene too because he's <clears> he's like oh he's like I don't know what was in those pills, but you should send it off, make a million bucks. Yeah. Oh yeah, he like, looks like, like this is more important. Face. Yeah, well, he's all revived. He's not a drunk anymore. Like, he, it's almost like he's kicked his habit and, like, revived himself. Seems like it, at least. Yeah. And he's like, I, do I look as good? He's like, I mean, I can see it in a mirror. And he's like, you look fantastic. He's, no, I see it in a mirror, but how's the camera going to see me? He's like, the camera is going to be good to you. And we're going to shoot <laughs> it in black and white to bring out your haunted look. And he's like, you know, I always look like that. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, they said it in TV Guide. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but it's just so... Cool, because he's like he has such a vision for it, and like he appreciates the actor so much that he he can be the only person who can pull this off. You know what I mean? And the way that he carried himself and acted in that particular series, and he just really appreciates it. And I think yeah, that's and he's really like cool. putting a lot of care into this. Yeah, and it's Everything not has just to be like perfect. It's not just like wrap it up and just end the series and just just finish the story. Because I need to know what happens. It's like he's putting like yeah. a lot of uh, you know really passion here. So uh, yeah, like Sean was saying, this, so they have their first table read, and Darren McGavin's like nervous as fuck. He's sitting down with like the other actor that's adjacent to him, and um, he's like, oh, he's reading his script all like sheepish, sheepish and shit, and like has a total breakdown in the middle of this. Yeah, and it's thing. like not to mention it's like almost it's like the corniest script. It, it is. Yeah. Too. It's like, you sit down, look up, but don't look up. <laughs> yeah, but, well, it's like that the, the fucking, you know, noir PI shit. Yep. But, you know, how many years is he removed from this character? Yeah. And for him to just jump- 20. Jump right back in like that after being a drunk for 20 years <laughs> and being washed up on a failed series, like yep. he feels uncomfortable at getting back into the role. I, it takes him about a minute or two of trying to read it before he just gets up and marches off. And oh. Smith's like- he, Where'd he go? Well, he's like, fine, I have to use more desperate measures, not not just the vitamins. <laughs> he <laughs> so, goes full Spock on this dude, guy. Dude, it's great, because Darren McGavin's like, he's back at his house, he's drinking again, and uh, Mr. Smith like goes up to him and like puts his hands on his temples. And he's like, what are you doing to me? Don't touch me. He's like, he's like you're going to forget about your drinking habit. I'm, ch- I'm changing your brain so you don't want alcohol, and you're going to forget about all of your previous... Uh, uh, doubts of yourself and all, all this your stuff. pain, all it's your gone. anguish, yeah, just I, psychically removes that drinking problem. Uh, can Mister Smith come the fuck over right. tomorrow, please? <laughs> yeah, but also when you like think about that on a different level. Like, wow, you're really fucking with some like serious shit. I mean, it's stuff you don't want to have in your own body, so okay. But it's like, wow, he could just change that on a dime. Imagine taking away all your insecurities tomorrow, right? Well, that, you, that but, would be a great thing. <laughs> But for the purpose of reviving a twenty-year-old yeah, well, TV show, <laughs> well, that's the best. That's the banger because he's like, he got the best gift of all. Even after this was done, he just had yeah. that. Now that's the banger because he turns around, and he's like, "Who are you?" And he's like, "I'm your biggest fan, and I'm not gonna let you fail me." <laughs> then he no longer has like the DTs. He's not shaking anymore. He's wearing like a nicer suit all of a sudden, and he's like firing the lines off no problem. Yeah. 
One one take Sally kind of oh, stuff. Oh yeah, it's great. Like, we get this like this montage of the Max Paradise series. We kind of get a glimpse into what it's like yeah, and like how they're it. shooting it. You see the dailies, him yeah. going through it and showing Mr. Smith. And he's like, it's perfection. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's wonderful. <laughs> and he's like, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. <laughs> And like the whole thing is like the character in the that that he's like doing the the reading with previously is supposed to be his long lost brother. Yeah, that's how the series ends. Yeah, yeah. he he's the one because the whole thing was they didn't know who like shot his wife. Uh, I guess that uh, was Max where Paradise's it, wife, right? Well, the, and they the, the didn't know Max yeah. Paradise's identity. Yeah, because he mentions like the table read Max Max Paradise was a name he got off a badge. Yeah, that he found. It's pretty cool. Interesting <laughs> right? it's like idea. Kind of an interesting like story within a story. Yeah. And it's like, all right, there's some like interesting little like, you know, like noir detective sort yeah, of bits 100%. here. Like, like they thought about it more than they really needed to. And that kind of elevates it. But it's fun. You get to see, you know, they're looking at the dailies like and seeing the footage of the dialogue and everything. And it's just like this totally ham fisted, you know, ah, see there. <laughs> like, yeah. And he's like, you shot my brother, you dirty rat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. Kind of shit. Angels with filthy souls. And like he like do- he like does a spin and like shoots his brother. Oh. Dodges a bullet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a couple of them, I think, um, actually. And it's so great. It's so great too because then you get like uh, a scene with uh, Darren McGavin and um, Dave Margulies, and he's like, uh, he's like, you know, he sat me down last night. He just made it sound so important. Like all this is so important to him. He's like, nobody's gonna watch this shit in black and white. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no one's gonna he's buy like, this. No U.S. He's like, this whole th- this, this whole operation is very strange. He's yeah. like, no U.S. market is gonna play black and white this day and age. And he's like, where the fuck are they gonna show it? J- yeah. China, Japan, France, France? all these all these places. Uh, so they finish Mac Par- Max Paradise, and they f- you see the end thing where he like shoots his brother or whatever. And he's like, it's perfect. It's perfection. It's mythic. It's mythic. <laughs> <laughs> so he says that through the episode, yeah. and it's like very symmetrical, very pleasing. So he thanks them both. Um, and they're like, well, when is this going to show anyway, buddy? He's like, he's going to air, it'll air in a country far, far away. Far yeah. away. Well, which one? I mean, far, far, far away. In a galaxy, possibly. Yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he says he'll be leaving tomorrow. He's like, thank you, gentlemen. Your art will be seen by millions. Yeah. And be appreciated. Yeah. You know? Which, kind of cool, even if they're like scratching their heads. It's like, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. And it's like, even if like these guys kept, you know, making fun of the show through this whole episode. It's like Mr. Smith keeps reminding them that it will be appreciated and that people will enjoy, even though they don't like it, other mm. people will. Your work will be seen and loved by millions. Your art will not be wasted. Well, that's the whole thing is like they cared a lot about it when they yeah. first did it and nobody liked it at the time, mm. you know? And so it th- found its audience. It, it sure did. <laughs> somewhere out <laughs> yeah, there. Somewhere on the air. Somewhere airwaves. out there. And this closing shot is good too, because like Mr. Smith just leaves. You don't see him like take off in a fucking mm, spaceship yeah. or any stupid that shit like spoiled that. Or, or soiled it rather. Like yeah. Spiffy Remo. Yeah, and he, yeah. Just, he didn't phase out or anything. He just yeah. leaves. He walks out the door. The Hofgoss ship. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Spiffy Remo's like, well, did you get him to make the show? I gotta know. <laughs> oh my god. Um, they're watching it eating yeah. popcorn. Yeah, they just hire Spiffy ah. Remo. Yeah. He's the tra- the translator. Yeah. <laughs> For the hearing impaired. <laughs> Oh, there it is. <laughs> but he's got a fucking hat on, like a, a detective hat. Yeah. Anyway, it's a great shot between David uh, Margulies and uh, Darren McGavin because they're walking outside, and it's like these two friends that known each other forever, and like they're back together. They had a lot of fun, like make like finishing the series that they didn't yeah. get to finish. And they're and they're and he's just like, well, you know, who's this going to air for? Like, what do, what are we here for? What do we do this for? I mean, we did it for a shit ton of money, yeah. and it was fun. But, and he's but, got but, it all but for figured who? out. Yeah. Darren McGavin's like, yeah, he said he's going to air in a very far away place. Really far. Like, beyond. She had Star up there. Orion. Next to Orion. Yeah. He knows. He knows the. Distant signals TM. Yeah. yeah. Even yeah. actually named name drops the episode yeah. right there. Um, and he's like, uh, Smith's people, Smith's investors, you know, they just, they, 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 they got a TV show from the 60s and they wanted to know how it ended. Yeah. And they were like, fuck it. We're going to come to Earth and make it happen. Yeah. yeah. And like he <laughs> with, explains, with, he's like, the signal launches out into space. Yeah. It's revolved around a star. His people picked it up, and that's the only signal from Earth they received. And they loved it. Yeah. And they fed him magic vitamins and paid him in fucking solid gold. <laughs> yeah. And finished the series. <laughs> very. We're all going to be very pleased. Thank you, Darren McGavin. Doesn't doesn't have to work the bars anymore. No. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Unless he, he said, wants to. He said for the rest of his life. Well, it depends on what they paid him. <laughs> the, yeah, the yeah they kept fine. most of the royalties. <laughs> yeah. The fucking the uh the the what do you call it? the manager probably took most <laughs> yeah, of them. Exactly. Oh my God. And he's like he's like, well, you seen them? They're aliens, but they look just like us. You know, he's just a nice guy, just like us. <laughs> 
I don't know. It was kind of it's like the sweet kind of ending, mm. and like like huh, imagine that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, staring off into uh, into the sky. Yeah. So yeah, what do we think of this episode? I, I just think this one's actually okay. I, I didn't like this one that much. It's uh, kind of middle of the road for me, honestly. I, I like the concept a lot, like kind of the movie within a, an episode kind of thing. Like Chris was saying, like and like you guys were talking about, like you know, I guess what I was trying to say earlier when I'm saying like they did more than they had to is like they didn't have to sit there and add all these like complicated backgrounds for this character, but it adds extra shit to it. Oh, it yeah. elevates the episode in the sense of like, hey, could have just been some generic noir bullshit. But it's like, oh, he has like amnesia and he doesn't know his name, but he read it off a pamphlet. Like that's cool. Uh, I appreciate little details like that, but overall. I don't know. I feel like I figured it out really early. And then for me, sometimes that kind of like the rest of the magic kind of dissipates if I already know what the punchline is, which I totally recognize that's a me thing. Like, I get that 100 um, percent. Because I don't think they try to hide it at all. I guess. No, I guess that is true. Yeah, it's, they're putting it down. If you if you can pick I think up I even on. said that yeah. earlier in the episode. Yeah. And and I do like the idea of like this, like, again, the guy in the suit talking very like plainly, very grammatically correct. Uh, obviously, has become more of a trope over time, but uh, I, it's a good trope. It's a good one. Yeah. And, and also the trope, again, I don't know how much of it was in the 80s. I'm sure it was by then the 50s blew this out of proportion. But, oh, the thing went into space and something came back. But I like, like you guys are saying, Galaxy Quest. It yeah. definitely like similar concept of like the TV show that... The aliens loved, or like a Gilligan's <laughs> Island or something, you know? Uh, Alf loved Gilligan's Island, and then there exactly. was a whole Gilligan's Island episode where Alf went to Gilligan's Island. Was it really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it, it's. I'm saying middle of the road, but maybe it just didn't click for me. Like, I could definitely see the potential, and, I, and I'm guessing based on the way you guys were talking about it, you probably rank it higher than me. But uh didn't totally work for me, but I really appreciate it. Yeah, I thought this one is a very interesting idea. And it's not at the top of my list or anything, but I think it's a fun episode. It's pretty comfy. And it's all the actors, too. It's like they pull it together. Mm. And it's like you have Mr. Smith. You got the, you know, Max Paradise himself. And it's fun enough to to keep me interested in, in, in watching it. It's like I'm not after this to rewatch it all the time. And, you know, I like more of the, the horror ones. But this is a, it's fun, I think. It's harmless. It's got some cute ideas. <laughs> yeah. You know what it actually feels like a little bit is kind of like one of those Star Trek episodes where they go like back in time. It's like it's still Star Trek. It still feels like Star Trek, but there's like some silliness about it. Like this feels like Tales, but it feels silly because of like the the actual uh, uh, framing of the yeah. framing device. Yeah. It's it's harmless. It's not as like offensive as like the comedy episodes are yeah. where they're just like in your face and you're oh, just rolling your eyes. Yeah. Mm. It's like this one is. I don't mind it at all. I think it's very interesting. There's some great ideas here and it feels like a cross between like outer limits and the twilight zone. Yeah. Especially with the ending when they're on the roof, kind of like there's our TV signals and there's yeah. the, the, oh, yeah. the little bit of exposition and everything. <laughs> sure. He might as well say, you know, off in the twilight zone. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. It definitely feels like an amazing stories. That too. Type oh, yeah. Thing, yeah. Uh, where it, it is, it is like this heartfelt kind of lighthearted mm -hmm. episode. Mm -hmm. And you know, you've heard us, you've heard us talk about like how, especially this first season or this this season's particular, like earlier in these episodes, mm. where you know we're doing a lot of more sci-fi stuff than horror stuff. When it's a horror, you know, it's tales from the dark side. There's nothing dark about this episode at yeah. all. But however, um, you can sway me when you have really good writing, yep. a really good uh visual storytelling. The actors are great. Um. And the story's good, so you got me. Yeah, you know. So I brought. I also brought it up in the uh, the Satanic Piano episode, where they could have done a little bit more with the story, mm -hmm. a little bit more exposition wise, and they feel like they fit so much into this episode in such a short amount of time, and like paced it and wrote it perfectly to get all of those bits without being hand fisted about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. And I think that's why I like this one so much. And like, I love the message of this one too. It was making me feel like, especially watching it now, like people are out there who love your work. Yeah. Even though you might not be Steven Spielberg or like the most mm. famous fucking director mm. or whatever like that, there's somebody who appreciates it so much and sees all the hard work that you put into it. And it was, it's, it makes me feel good to watch that. Um, 
to where to 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 where this this alien comes down and basically reinvigorates these guys not only careers but like appreciates what they had put out and done yeah you know to Re- a point where they, their passion almost. yeah reignites their passion or the creativity and saw all that passion and creativity and what they were doing you know and i think i think that's really cool and chris said it best this is like a cozy episode yeah mm. for me there, there there's an air about the entire thing um and, and that might be darren mcgavin for me because he's got like you know he's got when you watch christmas story He's very that, you know, he's the old man, but he's got that warmness about yeah. him. Yeah. You know? And even even uh Dave Margulies has that too. And putting them together um really brings that all home for me. And the guy who plays Mr. Smith is, is really good too. Um, I don't know. It's it's cool. It's it's very optimistic while also being like science fiction yeah. kinda. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So there's like there's there's good tones that run throughout it where it's not just it's not just oh we're gonna scare you or it's just an alien you know what I mean like I don't know yeah it's, they, it's got they, a good through line yeah. yeah and they don't like beat you over the head with the alien part no it's no. more about the message of like you mentioned it's like even if you're not appreciative of your work someone out there could be a hundred percent and well, it's like that's nice to really think about where mm-hmm. it's like you know these guys it's like they were talking trash about their project the whole thing yeah yeah but there's someone out there that believes in it and they're passionate about it. So it's like kind of the message is like create something someone out there could enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I think of immediately of uh, Mr. Lobo saying <laughs> uh, they're not bad movies. They're just misunderstood. <laughs> and I, I definitely when you put it in that th- those yeah. terms, Joe, I definitely can relate. But I still that doesn't save the episode for me again. Sure. Don't, don't hate it or anything. But uh yeah, that uh, the message definitely speaks to me more than the episode. One hundred percent. It's also like a you're you're your own worst critic kind of thing, you know. Absolutely. And and like create to because it's in here mm. and put it out. Yeah. Like again, coming back to the satanic piano thing, like it's a good parallel because uh, Bancroft was simply creating to try to make money. No. And yeah. you can't just do that. Mm-hmm. There has to be a fucking yeah, passion. There's something missing. And yeah. he felt like he felt in that episode. Yeah. And it's like these guys kind of, you see it here. Yeah. It's like they had that f- passion of like that fire. Mm-hmm. And then when they made this dumb little series. Yeah. But that showed off enough to get people you yeah. know, attracted. And to even it. though it was canceled or whatever, like they still put their all into it and somebody appreciated it. Yeah. And wanted to see more of it. Now, here's a funny question. It's like if speaking of just like canceled shows that were just <laughs> yeah. like yeah. acts before the time was yeah. up. It's like, what is a series? I mean, for anyone watching, really, yeah. it's like, what's a series like you'd want to see brought back? It's like, what's a series you want see sent out into space yeah. for like <laughs> a race of aliens to watch and come yeah. and remake and you know continue? And you, and you can give them revivifying alien <laughs> vitamins and yeah. have no uh, limit to your budget, right? To fit to finish whatever it is. I think the show movie dumpster man. Uh, <laughs> I, I wish they continued it. Uh, if only aliens would come down to uh, Pennsylvania and deliver all that gold and uh, <laughs> diet supplements, uh, we could maybe continue it. But until then, it's uh, you know, it's still actually happening. Don't 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 close your browsers. This was a bit, <laughs> but you know, movie dumpster obviously bring us the money. No, somebody's watching this ep- this episode two hundred years in the future. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. There so just go. either get us at a cryo or just like <laughs> dig us up or something. <laughs> We're like Fuck 90 years old. Yeah. We're in a hard drive somewhere right. in a fucking dump. Can you talk about up. this movie yeah. that I really wanted you to talk Being about? Like little fish bowls, like yeah, Futurama. Yeah. <laughs> oh my heads. God. Yeah. Or look like Mr. House and fucking fall New Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, just like yeah. attached to some machine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Chris, uh, you got some more Midnight Madness stuff coming up. What do we got cooking? You race her head. Oh man, that's going to break out the chicken. I'm excited. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bring out the little baby. <laughs> yeah. Bring your own turtle baby. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, that's going to be May 19th. Red Bank, New Jersey, Basie Center Cinemas. It's going to be a ton of fun. I'm really excited. There's a link in the description. So you can go to thebasie.org slash midnight or click the link in the description to get your tickets today. So yeah, that's Distant Signals. Um, and let us know in the comments what you thought about this episode, uh, if you've seen it or not, or just watch the review and give us your thoughts on it. Um, definitely like and share this video if you dug it and subscribe if you haven't, please. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast app, please leave us a five-star review if you dig the show because it really helps out and gets the show out to more people. Uh, but until next time, I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. And I'm Chris Barr.
Tales from the Dark Side is always there, waiting for us to watch it, waiting for us to hit play. Until next time, try to find it on DVD and watch along with us.